Today, we embark on a research expedition across the surface of Mars. With his newly installed vehicle garage here from the last episode, we are now equipped to maintain and store Mars vehicles. So today I'm gonna to be looking at some Mars vehicles and using them to explore out to the west. We have gone to the east before where we found a big mining quarry, which we currently have not developed the technology to successfully take advantage of yet because it is, uh, it's quite the terrain that we have to navigate over there. Um, but today we're gonna go in this direction and see if there's anything else to be discovered over there. All right, so this is a bulky boy, but uh, we're gonna check out this planetary exploration rover by stealth. Oh my goodness, this thing, is this thing, this thing can't even fit in the garage. This thing is a garage. Oh man, it's a little bit laggy too. This is definitely something, is it's gonna be a temporary just to look at it. This is so much. I cannot believe how massive this thing is. It's, it's a mobile station. All right, let's close this door. This is pretty cool though. All right, we even got a craft bot inside with a chest. Can, we, can I open up this back section? I don't see a button back here for that. What is this? Oh, that's the door I just opened. Put on the other side. Okay, classic. Got, got a classic suspension mug inside as well. All right, um, let's hop in the driver's seat then. Lots of buttons on this thing. Oh, look at all those lights. Oh, there we go. That's how you open up the back. Get to open it up from the driver's seat, it looks like. All right. Oh, we even got some uh, downwards thrust to keep this thing pinned to the ground. Then it looks like number four gives us some forward thrust for some extra velocity. All right, uh, let's start heading off in this direction. See what we discover. Oh boy, <laughs> putting this thing to the test already. Oh, look at the chests. And even like there's a fuel canister underneath and a resource collector. We got resource collectors underneath and everything. This thing is intense. This thing is really intense. I don't think I'm gonna be able to fit through. I was kind of hoping to go through that archway. But this thing is a little bit too massive. Oh wait, hold on a second. I wanted to see if this thing could fit in the garage first. Let me see if this thing can fit in the garage before we actually take off. I think I might look at a couple. Oh no, we're tipping over. Hold on, hold on. I can save it. I can save it. Uh, there we go. Oh boy. This thing's intense. This thing looks amazing though. It's just it's just a little bit bulky. We even got the, uh, the dish on top rotating around. All right, we got to take a wide turn over here. I'm just going to go over. Gonna go over this terrain. Yeah, there's some complicated suspension stuff going on as well, which is probably adding to the lagginess of it. But yeah, I don't think I can commit to this vehicle for the long term. I might have to use another vehicle. Does this, this thing's way too tall. Oh no, look at this. <laughs> the garage we have is actually too small for this. It feels like a massive garage too when you're standing inside of it. That is ridiculous. All right, well, I gotta admit, this is a really awesome vehicle but it is a little too over-engineered for the series. We got to keep things a little bit simpler. Aesthetically looks awesome, but as far as the moving parts and suspension, I think uh, simpler is going to be better. All right, so up next, we have the Kalis Innovations Acridia Scout Rover by Before the End. And Scout Rover, pretty much, that's what we're doing. We're, we're roving around scouting for some, uh, just some information about the Mars surface here. Ooh, that's fancy. This thing looks like it has some pretty fancy stuff going on with the wheels and suspension. Let's see. Uh, lag is not bad at all yet so far. Looks like we got some passenger seats back here. What's this button do? Oh, we've got some... Want to put some tunes on? I got some background music though, so don't worry about that. All right, we got some interior lights. And um, how do I get into the seat? There we go. Ooh, look at this. What's first person look like? A little dim. The windows are a little bit tinted, but you know, maybe that's just protect from the sun rays. Oh, <laughs> Of course, we got the hole in the ceiling, so I guess that doesn't do us a whole lot of good. All right, here we go. All right, we got four buttons, too. Let's push them and see what happens. We got lights. We got more lights. Oh, looks like this is to prevent from high centering. And then we got the radio button. All right, do you think... Wait, this one might actually be able to fit um, inside this archway. All right, here we go. Let's see if this thing can fit through there. This is a scout rover. Can we navigate? Here, come on. Come on. There we go. That worked. That actually worked pretty well. Oh, by the way, the, for those of you wondering about the upcoming update that allows us to have bigger worlds and how that might impact the series, I think I'm just going to continue the series as normal because I don't know when that update is actually going to get pushed to live, and right now it is not stable with old worlds. And it looks like... Oh, look at this jump here. It looks like a massive jump with a really fast vehicle. We might be able to jump this whole thing. But it looks like we have another potential mining area that might be a little bit easier to access. Maybe some beginner mining over here. Maybe there's some better materials at that deep quarry, but we should take note of this. 
Another potential mining area slightly farther away, it, it appears. But it might be a little bit easier to deal with for our current technological uh, status. All right, let's continue along our way. We've got some interesting formations over here. Let's go inspect this rock. Oh, oh, you seeing what I'm seeing? There appears to be a little bit of a cave over here. Let's hop out and uh, check out if there's anything in here. I actually don't think I saw this. Oh, there's some tire tracks? Wait a minute. This is a little weird. Somebody seems to have... Wait, there's wood? Can can you make fire on the surface of Mars? Is this something that can... I, this, this, this reminds me of like a campfire almost. This is a little bit suspicious if you ask me. I don't know if we had any authorized excursions from the uh, Mars base. I'm, honestly, I don't even know if anyone else is even there. I hardly see anybody. It's just me walking around usually. But uh, it appears that somebody took shelter here. I mean, maybe somebody took a trip without telling anybody from the Mars base, but we're supposed to log all of our trips, so I don't know what that's all about. I mean, it, there couldn't really be any other explanation. Like, there'd have to be other life on Mars if that was the case. Although, come to think of it, there was that mysterious and unexplained space station disappearance a while back, so maybe it's all connected. Anyway, let's go ahead and continue along our way. All right, some more interesting rock formations, and oh. Oh, well, this doesn't look natural. Hold on a second here. Let's not get too close yet. We don't know if it's emitting any kind of radiation or anything like that. I think we should send in uh, a robotic scout. Here we go, by Plutonium, the Ingenuity Helicopter. Hopefully this thing can get us some readings to see if this is a safe area for us to get closer to. All right, here we go. The helicopter has been activated. Let's see if it can, uh, if it can manage to navigate its way over there. Oh no. Oh no, hold on. I'm trying. I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm on the remote controls right now. The controls aren't that easy. They're all reversed from what I typically am used to. I don't know who designed this thing. Well, Plutonium designed it. <laughs> Alright, we're, we're going though. This thing's actually working. Oh no! Oh no, no, no. Okay. Alright, go, 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 go. Oh! It wants to get into like a feedback loop, but I'm trying to fight it. All right, we're getting closer. Once we get close enough, the helicopter should give us some radiation readings, but uh oh, oh, we're losing control. There's some interference, interference on the controls. Hold on, hold on, trying to recover. Uh, come on, come on. All right, we're just gonna land nice and gentle. Oh, 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 there we go. I actually recovered. We gotta get as close as we can though. This thing doesn't have any yaw. All right, I feel stable. Things have stabilized. Maybe there is some Martian wind that knocked me off of my axis there, off of balance. All right, we're getting closer. Oh, oh, we got some more Martian winds coming through. Oh, it's getting hard to maintain control. Uh, oh man, the wind is intense. Come on, maintain control. There we go. There we go. The winds have died down a little bit. All right, we're getting closer. Oh, we're, man, the closer we get, the more the wind starts picking up. This is crazy. All right, here, let me turn it off. Come in for a nice, gentle landing. Whew. All right, we're near it. All right, we just gotta give the helicopter a few minutes and it's taking a reading of the environment. Any type of dangerous radiation level should be detected and we should be able to determine whether or not it's safe to approach with our vehicle. All right, I'm back at the Scout Rover. We just got the readings back and you can see we got mid-level radiation. I think that is something that we are equipped to deal with. If it was further on this side of the scale, I don't think we can make it, but our Martian suits are definitely rated for this level of radiation, so I think it's gonna be safe to approach. So I'm gonna hop in the driver's seat and we're gonna, uh, we're gonna approach and we're gonna see what this thing is all about. All right, I can also pick up the helicopter instead of having to fly it all the way back. Okay, here we go. Man, this is, this is ominous. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and send the helicopter back to base. Uh, looks like it's managed to use our instant recall teleportation technology. Only works for sending things back to base. We can't use it to go anywhere else, though. All right, so there appears to be some type of strange reflective monolith. It's right in the middle of nowhere. Definitely not natural. I don't think it's natural. I mean, it could be like a slab of some meteor that ended up sticking down into the surface after falling out of the sky, but why would it be so perfectly rectangular in shape? This kind of makes me a little bit more suspicious about that cave we found back on the way here. I think I'm gonna try to take a sample of this and bring it back to base. Okay, let me see if I can hit a piece off of it right here. Oh, 
This doesn't seem to be working at all. All right, my research so far has determined that it's definitely made out of a very hard material. Definitely harder than the hammer I brought with me. I think I might have to resort to deploying the Mars rover made by Chex Mix that has a built-in drill on it. So don't question how I brought this with me on this vehicle. It, it folds up. I promise it folds up like much smaller into storage, okay? All right, I'm approaching it with the rover. Let's go ahead and activate the drill. Let's hope that this thing is capable of breaking off a piece of this. It's sparking. Definitely seems to be doing a little bit better. All right, hold on. All right, it might take a while. We'll let it sit there for a little bit, drilling away. We'll see if it'll make any progress at all. Oh, oh, it looks like we've actually made some progress. I was looking away and I missed it. A piece has fallen down here, but the weird thing is there doesn't actually appear to be any piece missing from the actual monolith itself. Could it have possibly regenerated? But look, here it is. I think we should take this thing back to the Mars base for research. If only I had a dedicated research facility installed. <laughs> Probably should have done that before going on a research expedition. But don't worry, we can store it in the garage for now and then think about a research facility later or bring it back. All right, there we go. I've placed it in the back of the scout rover. Now let me go ahead and send the uh, research rover back to base. There we go. All right, let's get back in and head on back to base. Man, this monolith gives me the creeps. I'm kind of happy to actually be getting away from it for now. All right, here we go. Oh, this, uh, this scout. Ooh, look at that. Look at that suspension. This scout's actually been serving me pretty well so far. It's got a decent speed, too, so we don't have to wait too long to get from point A to point B. Man, look at that. Sometimes the Mars surface looks really, really beautiful. And other times, you see monoliths like that. And, uh, looks a little bit more horrific. All right, so funny thing I did. Is this thing too long for this garage? This is a really long vehicle. We definitely have the height covered, but let's see about length here. Oh, there we go. Oh, look at that. That's almost perfect. That's really nice. Now let's go ahead and close the door. There we go. Wow, this thing fits really, it's almost like this garage was built for this, or this was built for this garage. All right, now let's go ahead and uh, Let's bring this with us. Let's place it over on the, the table over here and I can weld it right on top. There we go. All right, so I'm just gonna keep that there for now. Hopefully leaving this thing alone won't have any unintended consequences. But I think the best way to deal with this is we need to build up ourselves a research lab that is dedicated and capable of researching any objects that we end up finding out in our exploration, things like that. And in the meantime, I'm gonna send an order up to the satellite to watch the area around the monolith, just in case anything suspicious ends up happening over there. So if you guys have any ideas on how to study this and what we should be looking for when it comes to this mysterious block that we were able to chip off of the monolith, uh, let me know down in the comments below and hopefully we'll have an awesome research center to actually put some of this research to the test. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss those future episodes. I hope this video has earned your subscription. This has been Scrapman and I'll see you next time. Bye.